Now I've spent a fair amount of time with the latest version of Afterburner and I just want to, oh, okay, that won't work. Well, with the GTX 590, the, uh, the latest beta version of Afterburner I was able to get my hands on does support overvolting. And I wanted to test my hypothesis that the underclocked GF110s on here, uh, the underclocked, undervolted GF110s um, would be able to clock up nearer to their single card brethren, like the GTX 580, if they were over volted or, or even volted or, or even set to the same voltage as the GTX 580. So while I was not able to get to the same performance level um, at the same voltage with more voltage, so I actually maxed out the slider in Afterburner. I'll show you guys the settings afterwards. I was able to achieve better than stock clocks of a GTX 580 on the GTX 590. When you consider how much lower clocked it comes by default, I was able to get over 800 megahertz on the core, which is about a 30% overclock, which is outstanding. And then on the memory, I was able to get up over 2.1 gigahertz. So that is about 22% on the memory. So that's going to turn into some serious performance improvements. So what I'm going to do is, uh, or what I'm doing here is I'm going to be running a 3D Mark 11 uh, before and after to give you guys a, a rough ballpark of how much extra performance we're able to get out of the GTX 590 by overclocking it as such. Now, I won't make any claims about how long your card is going to last. And do bear in mind, guys, that, yeah, sorry, my light hasn't been pointed in the right direction here. Do bear in mind, guys, that uh, depending on the manufacturer of your GTX 590, you may not necessarily have any warranty left as soon as you start overvolting and overclocking and stuff like that. So uh, be very careful. Um, I mean, this card has no warranty anyway, so I'm not that worried about it. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'll be back when I have the results. All right, so here's my final 3D Mark. 11 score. I'm using the extreme preset on the overclocked GTX 590. Now, bear in mind, guys, okay, check this out. Temperatures, even in a benchmark, so we're not even talking when I'm intentionally stressing the temps, are up to 86 degrees. So max temps and max power consumption, I'll show you guys the power consumption numbers in a bit here, are significantly up versus the stock card. So here are the clocks that I finalized on. Hold on, just got to get it to focus. Okay, there we go. Nope. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, yeah, there we go. All right, so core voltage. I have maxed out the slider. That is as much as uh, Afterburner is going to allow us to give it. Core clock, we're up at 809 megahertz, so that's well over a stock GTX 580, and the shader is correspondingly high. Memory clock, we're up over 2.1 gigahertz on the memory and the fan speed I have left at auto. So I'm gonna run the stock benchmark now because I didn't actually do any 3D Mark testing for my reviews and then I will be able to give you guys even more details. So with our stock clocks, we get just over 3,000 3D Marks. So that gives us a, eh, I guess it's not that much of an improvement. So I guess Nvidia knew what they were doing when they clocked this card at what they did because I'm about to show you guys, well first of all here you can see that the temperatures are much lower so in this benchmark we peak at about 75 degrees. So I'll show you guys what I run into in terms of power consumption and acoustics. So there you have it guys, we can easily pull over 500 watts from the wall. Um, I've seen it peak higher than that in games like Metro 2033 up as high as around 550 to 570 watts from the wall with the GTX 590 overclocked the way it is. Um, one thing to note actually is that in Metro 2033 I saw a bigger performance improvement than I did in 3D Mark uh, in 3D Mark 11. Um, I went from what was it? Hold on, I got my numbers here beside me. Um, yeah, in 3D Mark 11 I saw like less than 10% performance improvement, but in Metro 2033 it was closer to 15%. So I'm not really sure what's up with that, but those were sort of informal testing numbers, so I don't put too, too much stock in them. As far as max temps go, 
it looks like this is pretty similar to what we saw before. So about 88 degrees is as high as it goes, and since it can't focus worth anything, there we go. 88 degrees is about as high as we see it go, but it is significantly louder. So I'll throw a couple audio clips onto the end of this one where I'll show the non-overclocked versus the overclocked GTX 590. Thank you for checking out my little video here on the limits of the GTX 590 in terms of overclocking. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.